go live, let's go live, let's go live, let's go live. We are live, we are live, we are live. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? I have to check all this first yes, because first. in spite of all the many <laughs> weeks of streaming, I've still not figured this shit out. Um, as a result of which, I have to check this out. Hello, hello, hello. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hello, Pranay. Hello, Vikas. Hello, Priya. Hello, Ilma. Hello, Divyansh. Hello, everybody. Um, we are ready to start this stream. I have here with me Mr. Zain Memon. Hello, Zain. How's it going? Hi, how are you? Good. Just uh, getting out of the third wave. So. Yes. Hopefully, yes. hopefully getting out of the third wave. That's the hope. Yes. Uh, for those of you who might not know, uh, Zain, aside from being an all round brilliant person, is also the creator of the board game Shasan, which you can see in the back of my frame here. Um, it's there. And wait, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? You can. You can sort of see it. There we go. That's Shasan. Sort of, Shasan. Yeah. Yeah, there we the go. Back Over there. Sliver, yeah. It's at the back there. That's Shasan. Really cool board game, sort of set in politics um, and all of that. So, very cool game that I've loved. Uh, bought it last year. I've played it with a lot of friends. I have loved it. Friends have loved it. And in general, uh, Zen, you know, I'm a huge board game fan. Like I just am. Uh, I do games night with friends. We play together a lot, all of that. And the great thing about knowing you is that now I can just dump all my questions onto you, which is uh, when we were having a conversation earlier, uh, it's like you said, um, a lot of people think games just like they just fall to the earth fully formed like board games right because it is the basic yeah. board game that everybody else knows like ludo hai chess hai this time it was all made like hmm. five six thousand years ago so i feel like casual <laughs> logo lagta hai ke matlab it's a dead industry in the sense that jo game banne the ban gaye aur ab hum khel rahe hain uh, aur bas exactly. wahi hai matlab theek hai wo jo fossils hai wo hum khel rahe hain and that's it uh but that is not the case so first tell me about how you got into designing and making games and how one gets into that yeah and uh, and like yeah like you said board games are making a resurgence it's not like the art form is dead uh, so i i founded this co-founded this company uh, with uh, with anand khushbu vinay pooja and neel so six of us got together a few years back and uh, we said let's let's build a media company that will create the products we we we'll, we would love to consume ourselves um and we created memesis uh, over there we we have been experimenting a lot we did uh, we did an insignificant man a political documentary we did bunch of virtual reality uh, we did okay computer yes and a lot of things in in, in the middle and uh, and the conversation with shasan began with uh, with khushbu and vinay uh, who co-directed an insignificant man a political documentary saying ke ye conversation khatam nahi hua hai abhi tak hmm. i think hmm. audience engaged hai we haven't said everything we need to say everything we should have said how do we take this conversation forward to which i responded saying that yes uh, didactic media jahan pe aap keh do ko jo interactive nahi hota hai that's great but uh, i think there is great learning and great experience in just being able to interact with the story you are you're creating right. and co creating a story uh, simultaneously my primary medium of choice my native medium is not uh is not television it's not films uh given a choice i will escape into a game and i've been doing that since i was 3 years old i i play all kinds of games tabletop games video games board games switch uh android ios i try and play every game possible i just i'm an I just love gaming so i thought let's let's see the experience i have from playing a few thousand games and let's build a game uh and it started off as really a small experiment and uh, one thing that to the another and suddenly we won kickstarter right. and it was the biggest indian project on kickstarter ever yeah tell us tell and... me a bit about that I actually want to stop and tell that's a crazy story because yeah. um this i remember when it happened uh, it was freaking wild so you made like the sample thing you made a video yeah. you put it on kickstarter and mm-hmm. then what happened so uh, we were second guessing everything we are complete outsiders and once we started making the game we realized how deep the rabbit hole goes we saw that 78% of kickstarter revenue comes from board games really uh, yeah and uh, and the industry has really evolved and and there there are entire circuits of of board game media and press and coverage charlie hall who writes for polygon only writes tabletop right okay and there's a bunch of uh, uh things happening so we deep dive into it we made a few uh, wrote a few cold emails and the community was warm and they said just do a kickstarter we'll we'll guide you through it so we prepared for 6 months and we launched our first kickstarter 
abhi i have i don't know in my wildest dreams what's going to work hmm. uh and we we make a a three and a half minute cinematic trailer uh, uh there's this filmmaker georgi palfi okay who made taxidermia okay uh it's a khan willing film and he was in in goa uh here here he was visiting and he played the game and he said i love the game how can i help so shameless as i am asked him uh can you shoot a video for me ha huh. <laughs> he's like cool what do you want so i sent him a script and budapest where he lives has the craziest world war 2 bunkers okay so he went into the bunkers and he shot this trailer it's on youtube uh the cinematic trailer for shasin and uh, and we launched and suddenly we realized that and there's something i was talking to you about earlier that the a lot of people especially in the board game industry were second guessing the audience and saying uh-huh. ki political content consume nahi karna hai kisi ko acha let's let's not make political content people don't want to engage in serious topics in board games which had created a a void of sort hmm. in board gaming there was block by block that came 2 years ago, earlier there was uh, tamini hall and die marker that came 15 20 years earlier but political games nahi bane the okay and we hit the right spot and suddenly starts spiraling out of control okay and before we know it we have made a uh, half a million dollars on the kickstarter yeah you guys yeah you can be crazy about a bunny on the kickstarter <laughs> yeah and and now we have seven game designers working full time all who have been trained in house by us oh wow uh, making games everything ranging from uh, mandir and uh, and nadal making a game about uh, a, a rpg set in indian mythology to a game about freedom struggles to a game about building your own religion oh wow so we, so we have all sorts of games being built and we are like this is one of our primary mediums now right now tabletop games agar skill set bad gaya aur capital bad gaya to video games bhi banane hain ha ha but that's a little ways off That's incredible, man. That's just what a great story, Chad. I want to know what are your favorite board games, Chad. Tell us what your favorite board games are, uh, so we can know going forward. And yeah, Shreyas, you are saying that he adults play more board games than kids now, and that's true. Do you, is that board, true? Yeah, like most of my audience. Okay, my first name box reads fourteen plus. Right. That's compliance reasons, because choking has that kind of testing. Yeah, yeah, I got the little thingies. Yeah, and uh, also because the subject matter is is a, a lot of times very very sen- sensitive, right? And uh, and R rated. So, it, but at the same time, that's true. Shasan is quite beautifully R rated. I have to say, <laughs> um, some of the clues really, really, really um, give yeah. you cause for pause. I have to say, there are times where yeah. it's quite horrific reading some of those clues um, or some of those questions out uh, because you don't hold back. If you guys haven't played, Shasan is a political board game. It's very good fun, um, but yeah. So Catan, Wingspan, again huge hits. Wingspan is the new Catan. It's the new gateway game for a lot of people. Right. It is by this great designer named Elizabeth Hargrave. Okay. Uh, and an illustrator named Beth Sobel. Okay. Amazing game. If you can get your hands on it, okay. check it out. Uh, okay. Splendor is a is a classic. The tournaments going on in India all the time. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Splendor is fun. Splendor is a nice abstract game. Seven uh, Wonders. People are talking about. We're talking. Dominion. About uh, Dominion is a very fun game. So Charita plays it a lot. Okay. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, super fun game. Okay. And then there's of course Monopoly. Of course, of course, Monopoly yes. is there. So now that we know about all of these <laughs> games, let's get into it, man. How does yes. where does even begin? Where does even designing a game even begin? Like I'm assuming, aside from the creative aspect of it, where mm-hmm. you go, I have this idea for a narrative, etc., whatever. I'm mm-hmm. assuming they are uh, the world of games is obviously governed by certain. principles which yeah. are i'm guessing scientific in nature for want of a better word mm-hmm. uh so yeah how do you make a game uh so again okay, let's start with what a game is a game isn't just when you open a flash card and read a flash card that's not necessarily a game when you have mm-hmm. lego and you assemble lego that's not a game okay uh, a game is fundamentally an interaction between multiple parties okay and the way these parties can interact has specific rules uh and you are incentivized to achieve the specific rules now this by this i mean uh any game i mean even sports okay cricket may have specific rule set hai there are 11 ways of getting out uh similarly football has its own sets of rules everything from simply that you can't touch the ball with your hand to offside okay abhi aapko ye constraints mein ek objective diya gaya hai ki aapko samne wale goal mein uh you just have to score goals in these particular constraints the team that does the best wins hmm 
uh but that's how a game is different from a toy or different from just an activity right okay um now that's the first step in uh, is so okay so kelvin has an interesting question then so is solitaire yes. not a game then uh solitaire is a, is a single player game yes okay. but again okay. uh here the interaction is happening between you and the deck of cards the two the two the two okay. variables are you and a set of cards now the deck of cards isn't, isn't necessarily helping you out it's, right it's random and now you're you're supposed to optimize now i don't a lot of don't people people don't know a solitaire has a scoring system if you oh. ever play solitaire on a windows pc on the bottom right corner you see a score oh okay uh and it's not it's not just about uh finishing the deck it's about how fast you finish it um so yeah so okay uh, got it got it तो सॉलिड का एक स्कोर सिस्टम होता है माइन स्वीपर का भी स्कोरिंग सिस्टम होता है करेक्ट एंड मोस्ट पीपल नेवर फिगर आउट हाउ टू प्ले माइन स्वीपर माय मोस्ट पीपल डोंट मोस्ट पीपल जस्ट क्लिक इट टुक आई स्टिल रिमेंबर द लाइट बल्ब मोमेंट डे इन माय लाइफ व्हेयर आई फिगर आउट हाउ टू प्ले माइन स्वीपर ऑल राइट इट वाज अबाउट 4 इयर्स आफ्टर आई स्टार्टेड प्लेइंग माइन स्वीपर आई एम नॉट किडिंग इट वाज अबाउट सम 4 इयर्स आफ्टर आई स्टार्टेड प्लेइंग माइन स्वीपर व्हेयर आई रियलाइज द नंबर is the number of bombs or mines that are in the squares around this particular square and now i can use combinations of those numbers to establish it's not just random clicking oh my god yeah. it's not just random clicking it was like this crazy 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 light bulb moment and yeah. um, then so for people who don't know yes so basically the number that you see in mine sweeper so if you click and it says 3 It means that in the three squares above, the three squares to the side, three squares here, three, so eight squares basically. Those eight squares may say, "Kaha pe to three bomb hai, three bomb hai, or five safe square hai." And now using that and using say another number that you have between those two squares, you can judge ke can I click here or not, and that's the game. So you're welcome, guys. Uh, yeah. This stream has been on for eleven minutes, and I have already changed the lives of some of you. So. Um, Thank you. Welcome. You are absolutely welcome. Yeah. So <laughs> let, let's take let's take example of a of a recent hit. What is? Huh. What is yes. the rule? Simple. Hai. It's basically the the uh, what was the game in the childhood we used to play? Bobby. Mind. No, no. Mind something was called right. Oh, mastermind, no? mastermind, mastermind, mastermind. Yeah. Mastermind. Yeah. Mastermind. So it's mastermind. Mastermind. But words. Yes. 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 So rule simple. Hai. Orange, or yellow, or yeah, orange. Aaya. So uh, it's uh, it's the right character. Green. Aaya. The right position. Ha. Huh. Okay. And now you move on from there. Um, so the first thing, the what I how I approach approach games is that you have subject matter set. Kar liya hai apna. If there's a subject matter, just let's decide the objective. What is the objective? Is the objective checking the physical dexterity or optimizing for physical dexterity of a player? So that could range from everything from ping pong to mikado. I don't know if you sure. remember mikado. Arey mikado sticks. मतलब भाई. Yes. So many fights have happened over mikado sticks. It moved. It didn't move. It didn't move. I'm telling you, it didn't move. And people blowing on other people's sticks. Of all course, of that, remember? Of course, of course. Who can forget Mikado stick? Uh, to yes. some people watching this stream who may not have grown up in analog childhoods, yeah, um, we kept ourselves entertained in very distinct ways. And if you can even today find a set of Mikado sticks, it is the most annoying, frustrating. It's like it's it it's like even more frustrating Jenga. Like yeah, it's it, it's great. Yeah. It's great. It's flattened Jenga. Yeah, it's flattened Jenga. It's 2D Jenga. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what what is the emotion you're trying to instill? And then you can use certain tools to try and instill those emotions. Um, I'll give an example. I'll. Uh, have you ever used used a slot machine? Yes, I have used the slot machine. अभी स्विगी पे भी आता है, क्रेड पे भी है. हाँ. But uh, slot machines are basically you pull a lever and numbers show up. If the right numbers show up, uh, you are going to get a reward. If they don't. You try again. Got it. Now, the question here is, and the interesting question to ask here is, simple behavioral economics. के हिसाब से आपने दस रुपए डाले, lever खींचा, and suddenly the suddenly it's seven, seven, and then a cupcake, huh. and you lose. Now at this point, you should have gotten up and left, saying, "I lost." Why is it that you put one more coin in and pull again? Right. Um. It's because, and this was uh, I think for the last 15 years, that our brain doesn't release dip dopamine when we get a reward. Okay. It, re- it releases dopamine in the anticipation of a reward. Oh. 
the activity that's of, an in, that's an important nuance there yes so when your when when you put the coin in and you, and you pull the lever your brain's already happy oh so all your loot boxes in everything from overwatch to uh, to uh, dota that's how they work it's just the fact that you've seen the box it's not what's in the box it's the fact that you've tried that anticipation and if you notice it's never instant in 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 the big games the ones that work yeah the fact that you pull the lever it won't show you instantly what skin you have unlocked yeah 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 it will make do you like wait, a little then, yeah it'll do a small dance a small somebody animation. will add, do an extra animation just to give you time to have that dopamine exactly or dopamine will get but that that's what you're paying for everything mm-hmm. else is afterwards that's blowing my mind i feel manipulated i feel manipulated and dirty i'm thinking back and, to a lot of the stuff played in my life and i feel very <laughs> manipulated and i feel very dirty thank you and uh, and these are one of some of the many tricks that everything from banking apps to casinos use right like casinos mein to uh, they don't even have windows correct yeah and that's a that's a by, by design right no clocks no windows yeah. so that you Nothing. never know what time it is so yeah. you're sort in the, like this timeless void Ankit Sani thank you for your super chat he has a question why does the human brain enjoy difficulty in a game but hate it in real life awesome we'll get to that okay we'll get to that question. okay we will get to that but I yes have to, I have to you have a few point questions. yes no no go for it so we get to you that. were saying there's the dopamine hit that's where we were and it's the anticipation of it that causes that so that is one trick in the in a game design as arsenal right uh, it's called a random number generator okay uh, rng it's a luck element right uh the other things you need to consider when you making a game is uh how do you want the players to interact with each other do you want players to work together or do you want players to work against each other or do you want players to sometimes work with each other and sometimes not and depending on what emotion you want to in- in- entice like the frenzy of working in a kitchen when right. all hell is broken loose overcooked uh, exactly it's overcooked, overcooked. Where it's it it's is, you against the world. It's you against the kitchen. All of you against yes. the kitchen, basically. And the game doesn't tell you that uh, what you should do is select one person who calls the shots Correct. and one person who does the dishes. But, But the that strategy is emergent. shakes itself down. Correct. It yeah. emerges that, down to that. Exactly. You play. You fail the first four times, and the fifth time you're like, okay, listen, you do this, you do this. I'm going to do the the the, the menial labor, but I will call the shots. Got it. Okay. Correct. So. you basically when you when you started identifying what mood how do you want the players to feel okay you uh, you start adding tools to it so but what the fuck did the guy who invented ludo want i want everyone to hate each other we, always we will we will bring <laughs> down ludo in a bit <laughs> because that can be the only emotion that the guy who invented like i want everyone to be friendless mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the emotion that the guy basically wanted to this thing that this person has three friends I want this person to not have those three friends also. Yeah. Was the uh, aim with Ludo. But yes, also so like people said, yeah, like please guys, uh, if you're watching the stream, please smash the like button. If you smash the like button, more people will come to the stream. More people will know. Tell your friends, send it to everybody. Say yahan pe bahut mast sexual best sabse insightful <laughs> duniya ka best discussion. Tell them that agar ye is stream pe aayenge to uske baad wo Ludo mein kabhi nahi harenge. Go tell them that. I don't care if it's true or not. Just go and tell them we figured out how to beat Ludo. and uh, tell them to come to the stream and smash that like button but yes zen keep going yeah so again let's before we answer the question that was asked I'll, uh, to answer the question i have to lay, lay down a few pieces of ground work sure one is hum game khelte kyun hain hmm. why is it uh, why do we play games uh, and the response i normally get when asked this question is because games are fun and that answer is a tautology okay why do we do things with that are fun but why are they fun why is it that we sure. enjoy games To answer the question, let's let's notice a, a trend uh, that it is not just human children who play games or who play. The young of every of a lot of species, out of higher order species and even lower order species, play games. Okay. Now, evolutionarily, biologically speaking, uh, if so many species have evolved play as a uh, as a as something. as that's incentivized biologically there must be some there must there must be something at the end of the tunnel there must be light there must be a reason they do so right um it's because games allow you to or play allows you to simulate the wild in a safe space okay okay 
that's very in the wild we, we were being hunted or we were we were hunting or being hunted in right. the wild we had to scavenge really really fast we had to pick berries and pick fruits really really fast before before someone else did right um and to train your young for doing that we, uh, the young start playing hide and seek the young start playing catch what the young are doing is taking risks learning what works and what doesn't work in a environment that is safe where they won't die where they won't die of of hunger right. so at 10 years later when they are adults they can do that in the wild you've Got seen it. dogs and cats play why why are they biting each other why are they yeah. play biting yeah. each other is because they are just reducing the threshold of danger and learning how to navigate the world around them got it so what you're saying is because i played ludo i now have to no. murder three friends in the future mm, is no have i understood you can say i now have to murder three friends in the future because i got to say i mean i'm going to have to think about this a lot cuz i like most of my friends i can think of at least two i want to murder off the top of my head but yeah ludo does that to you oh, and yeah. solo shasan sometimes this is yes that we will come to that i promise um and yes but but what what we have to do is so is understand that the games we play that we we evolve to we evolve to play everything from uh from playing hide and seek to catch to even jab the javelin throw uh isn't relevant to the world we live in we don't have to hunt we are not going to be hunted but it's very un- unlikely we're going to be hunted hunted um so why are we still playing the same games it is because our body doesn't know ke duniya badal chuki hai ke in the last 100000 years everything has changed because the genome evolves really really slowly and in the last 100000 years the games have remained the same so right. when 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 a parent tells a child stop playing and start uh start studying the child's brain doesn't understand that they understand that on an intellectual level but on an emotional level they don't okay because their their genome is telling them that the best way of learning to survive is by playing okay the best school in the world is play is okay. simulation so right now we need to start building games that simulate for the world that we are living in and not simulate for the world that uh, that we used to live in and if we make the simulations uh, exciting if we make the simulations engaging then we children will be training for the world out there children children will be playing in everything from stock markets to politics right because to dating because come to think about it uh all the decisions we have to make for who to vote for to who our partner should be yeah are things that take a hundred variables that you have to compute yeah and i mean most dating apps are literally just gamified dating right like that's literally all that they are it's just you've taken the act of finding a partner and you've gamified mm-hmm. it right through swiping but And but reduced it to the to the least important thing, which is uh, which is biological markers of wellness. Yeah, fair. Classical biological markers of wellness. Let me correct that. Uh, and uh, that's that's not the, that's not true. You need to look at everything from your partner's political leanings to how they how they treat animals around them to uh, to everything, right? Yeah. Uh, and to see if we're compatible with each other. Um, but suddenly you ask a 18 year old that hey, so from now that you're 18, you're going to a uh, final meeting partner you are going to know who to vote for you're going to know what career uh, you're going to pick but we have not uh, we have not trained you for complexity our training of complexity for you is hasn't been games what what your brain understands hasn't been interactive simulation but has been just keep char kitabe pad lo ha got it um and that's ridiculous that's that's, that's yeah that's training for absurd. training for disaster yeah that's absurd so again what shasan also tries to do when what a lot of, lot of uh, people try to do with their games is take 100 years take 20 years take 30 years and condense that information into 20 minutes into 2 hours into 4 hours okay so in 4 hours you have tried a strategy seen what works what doesn't work and known seen the outcome the the uh, the effect uh, the the cause and effect is very very apparent right So now this could be one of the reasons you would want to take an ex- a life experience. There are some games that do this really well that take a, a civilization. So this is this is game that I rarely play myself. It's called Europa Universalis 4. Okay. It is basically uh, they it's basically uh, Renaissance era Europe, and okay. uh, 
the way the empires were, the way everything was, and you right. start playing. And now you history is going to unfold like it unfolded. Right. As a king of this small vassal state that you are. Right. How do you change history? It's a dense strategy game. And now you can take five, four hundred years of history and play it in in twenty hours, and then try again. And now that will teach you about governance and uh, medieval history better than anything else. Right. Got it. Uh, now coming to the question that was asked, uh, which is let me scroll up a bit. Why does a human being enjoy resistance or difficulty in some game uh, and hate it in real life? Uh, imagine our ancestors. Okay, they they are sitting on a they sitting on a tree. Uh, uh, these are early, these are late, early primates. They are sitting on a tree and they are about to get down from the tree. And in the bush in front of them, they they see a dot, a black dot moving. They concentrate concentrate on it. and they see three of the black dots and then they see seven of the black dots and they're all moving in unison and they realize now their brain suddenly cycles through all the images that all the visuals they have seen in the past life in in, in the entire life and cross references them and says hey these dots moving this pattern might be a leopard mm okay so let's not climb down your brain needs to do very very complex levels of of problem solving of pattern recognition and when you do a pat- when you when you solve a pattern when you uh, when you do the pa- when you do pattern recognition that is really really fruitful your brain gives you gives you a, a dopamine hit right so because because you have these complex questions in life that you need to that need, your brain needs to compute needs to problem solve uh there's an incentive to problem solving Right. Okay. Now you you can hack that and simulate that in a world and say, okay, I'm going to solve this crossword, and that will have the same effect as saving your life by not climbing on the tree. Right. So you're It's telling me every way. Monday I escape the leopard. <laughs> every Monday your brain thinks you've escaped the leopard. Nice. Every every Monday my brain thinks to escape the leopard. That's great. And so when I play the cryptic crossword, it's my brain getting eaten by the leopard. God. Because you're you 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 you're. you're, you're, you're especially the crypto cost for string you have been doing you are you are looking at 20 different uh, variables and saying how do i connect these dots you're looking at everything from everything in from pop culture culture to history to english syntax correct that's true okay so there's that then okay so you have to decide so one you have to decide whether your game involves people playing against each other or playing cooperatively or playing yeah. teams against each other that's one decision that you have to make mm-hmm. all right when it comes into a game once you've made that decision what happens next second what do you see uh, uh so say we take ludo right as an example okay let's, and let's we go from ludo. there all right so let's, let's why does ludo work why does why does ludo work because okay if if you asked me mm-hmm. i would say one uh, ludo works because uh, there is uncertainty in the game up until the last minute Uh, okay. In the sense that there is no such thing as a certain win. You can be mm-hmm. three ahead. One person can be fully behind. Um, two, uh, you can be you can fall behind in the game very quickly, but mm-hmm. also that same weakness can become a strength in the later part of the game. Like in the sense that it levels the playing field often. So say for example, I haven't rolled any sixes and my four haven't gotten out, and the opponents have been bugging a bunch of people home. as a result of that there may now come a time in the game where they only have one one or two two pieces each on the board and now i have four on the board which then gives me a strategic advantage so the playing field levels out beautifully yeah and uh, three i think because if i have to go with your point of what you said about simulating real world things in the this thing it this might sound horrible but it gives me the feeling of betrayal for cheap like being like a very savage betrayer uh for cheap basically if mm-hmm. i had to say yeah so let's let's break it down into layers or as shreya layer. warrior says the sweet sweet revenge of cutting your friend's piece after he cut yours also true whole yes, different sweetness <laughs> whole different sweetness like that is the best murder yeah And the three levels to the game right the first level is the obvious level which is the rng the random number generator huh. every turn every player is rolling a slot machine yes aur ek se 12 ke beech mein sorry do se 12 ke beech mein koi bhi number aayega ha huh. uh with the highest possibility of a 7 that it's a it's a normal distribution curve and you will have these numbers show up ha huh. uh small aside uh in many digital games 
uh, and some of the ludo apps i don't know which ones exactly these numbers are rigged oh dude 100% And I don't want to take names, but there have been many times when playing yeah. <laughs> Ludo on my iPad, I have said one second, this is too fucking convenient. Like yeah. it's very, very forced drama. Like for sure, I hundred percent believe that some of these dice apps are horrible, and I much prefer the Ludo apps that let you play with your own dice on the side. And and you have to understand why that is. You are not creating. You're not trying to create a fair game when you're making a, a Ludo app. Okay. Uh, you're trying to make the most exciting game. people are not coming to have a a fair gaming experience they coming to have fun they coming to ha- build those narrative elements okay you know what happened suddenly i was four out and then i rolled four sixes in a row man are you now telling and me my ludo victories aren't real <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to do this too i am saying your ludo losses are not real either <laughs> ooh, ooh when you put it that way see when you put it that way yeah. um yeah So algorithm rigging in gaming is a big thing according to Shreyan Kalva is it that's horrible it's huge it's huge fifa for example has a paper where they they word it in a way that they are they, they are optimizing for retention right so they basically want victory. people to be there and want feel all the there. different emotions and want to try again as opposed to aur 70th minute mein drama hoga fifa ke game mein algorithmically on the academic papers published ho chuke hai ea ke similarly league of legends will match you against horrible players in your team and great players in opposite team until a point that the algorithm knows that you are going to quit and that moment give you a satisfying win again That's that has fucking crazy that the papers are out there to prove it's the same with poker says madul i don't know which poker app but i'm certain many, i'm certain many poker apps are doing this oh god that that horrible Again, and I know FIFA fans might hate me for saying that FIFA is rigged. I don't play FIFA myself. No, there's people, the people in the chat saying papers... FIFA. People, people in the chat are also saying FIFA is rigged. Yeah, and Samar's right. That's why I play chess. Chess, you can't do that in chess. That's true. You can't. Vrinda um, saying, "I feel so manipulated." Same feels, Vrinda. Same feels. What did feel? I feel so <laughs> dirty and used right now. <laughs> Ludo King, I thought you loved me. Yeah. Oh well, that's it. Does fine. it does it does love the micro transactions you do? So it, I do. I have done. I have done none so far. I have done none so far. Have um, you done any any uh, micro transaction my, in life? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. I don't talk about it. I did it, and then yeah. like I yeah. I didn't enjoy. It. Oh yeah, video is frozen. Oh, there, it's back. It's back. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I'll admit it. Uh, long time ago, uh, I was touring oh. a lot, and um, oh wait. Your video frozen just, again. Your video is frozen again. Just go. Give me a second. Just give me a second. Just no worries. No worries. No worries. No worries. Chat. Until then, I want you to tell me what was the coolest or the last board game that you played that you really, really enjoyed. Uh, I will tell you. I have played Shasan with friends recently, and I enjoyed that very, very much. I also played this really fun cooperative uh, card game called I'm going to say Forbidden Island. It's Forbidden Island, Fantasy Island, Forbidden Island. Hang on, let me Google it and see. I'm pretty sure it was Forbidden Island. Forbidden Island, Matley Lock Forbidden. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yes, Matley Lock Forbidden Island. Can you yes, hear me? Yes, yes. Now I can hear you. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Yeah, can you? Hear oh, there we go. You're back. You're back. You're oh, back. Awesome. You're back. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So I was saying, yeah, Forbidden Island is a great game. Matley Lock. Yes, uh, really fun. Really, really fun game. Matt, the same creator also made a game called uh, Pandemic. Oh, correct. Of course. Yes. Same person. Oh, oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah same person. Uh, again, Forbidden Desert, game. Forbidden Island. People have played Snakes and Ladders. People have played Catan, Secret Hitler, uh, Sequence. Also <laughs> great fun. There's a Trump version of Secret Hitler that's out. There's a Trump version of Secret. Nice. Uh, you should check nice. it out. Nice, nice. Carcassonne. Yeah. Yes, I played some Carcassonne. It's yeah. great. Exploding Cats. Also great. Exploding Kittens. Yeah, and Exploding they have kittens. a new Kickstarter yeah, yeah. live that went live today. Oh, really? Game. Yeah, yeah. Chalo. It's called. Something wombats. I forgot the name. Of course. Wonder yeah. what now? Acidic wombats. Acidic. Last what? Last was throw throw burrito, and now it's something wombats. <laughs> But okay, yeah. yes. So you say, all right. So Ludo, what makes? Why does Ludo work? So the first layer is the RNG. You roll yeah. the dice, and sure. it's a dopamine hit. And the one rolls the hit, dice, and it's a dopamine hit. And you, there's no downtime. Right. Correct. Correct. You play it. You do one action, and you move on. Correct. And each action is has a reward system to it. Okay. Second layer of Ludo is uh, is it's a social game. It's a very very social game. Yeah. Ludo is best played on voice chat, on video chat, or in person. Correct. 
uh, and why that is is because then then you have you start pulling each other down you start started as you think mujhe mujhe mat kaat usko kaat correct 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 uh, which means and, instant forming of in group out group is called in group out group and instant flux of in group out group correct 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 is suddenly you are, your best friend is like sorry you're too far ahead i'm going to kill you correct correct um the third element is what you talked about is that the game uh, has a narrative arc that balances itself out correct. the narrative arc is very simple uh you know who's in the lead you know who's behind you know who's trailing behind you know you are the protagonist in your story you are bhuvan playing on the back foot correct it's my who's who's injured you know <laughs> correct yes that's a great uh, analogy love it <laughs> and uh, and now you now you have to win correct similarly each one is building their own narrative in their head and they have a good four the four there's a good four act structure in it right fairly good first second third fourth and each one of it coming with its own threshold okay once okay. your first pawn is in the circle it can't come back out so you right. can't fall back down from that level correct 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 but sam hamilton is the now you have one weapon shot correct like like what you mentioned and that balance of uh of rng uh mixed with a social element mixed with a game that has a narrative arc makes it a great game but the f- most important thing is that games have ripple effects have network effects you more likely to play a game that you already know how to play right. ludo takes 10 seconds to learn that is true that is true the learning curve on it is like next to nothing a 3 year old me was playing ludo with the same uh, gusto that a 30 year old me would play this is 100% true yeah we have shivam over here who plays imperial struggle twilight struggle these are nice heavy games nice yeah. i have not played those twilight struggle is a great two player game made by one indian and, and jason and uh, ananda okay uh, and it's basically cold war uh, the world in the, in the cold war age it's europe versus oh, wow. russia and it's a six hour game two player oh wow that sounds great yeah okay that sounds amazing <laughs> <laughs> so so okay so ludo is huh. a very hard rng level heavy social game huh. but the recipe of game design has three fundamental parts to the pie okay. there's the luck element that we spoke about a lot the dexterity element and the dexterity element works well in certain kind of games okay this could be mikado jenga uh, kabuto sumo games which in, which incentivize you to play more and more and incentivize game mastery got it uh, and one thing that all good games uh, the audience has claimed they have but uh, oh, yes thank you shivam yes yes gmt is the publisher that makes uh, what do you call it uh, makes twilight struggle makes a bunch of other games these are heavy uh, uh, heavy uh, what do you call it got war it. games got it. for lack of better terms um, and uh, Yeah, if you can, if you have the appetite for a GMT game, please play it. I only have five myself. Okay. And I play them like once or twice a year. Six hours sounds like a, it's quite a commitment. Like six hours. Six to look like heavy. And six for one game, right? One one game, yeah. Oh, that's heavy. Then commitment. there is Twilight Imperium, not Twilight Struggle, Twilight Imperium. That's a six-player game. Takes twelve hours. दोस्त मारेगा मेरे को मतलब पूरा गेम नाइट सात घंटे का होता है थप्पड़ मारेगा ये गेम सात घंटा चला तो मतलब डू Because mm-hmm. in terms of tokens, in terms of you have you haven't leveled up, you haven't done anything. It's in that sense a lot like say a D and D or this that whatever, where until you reach a certain XP or you get a certain bonus, you're taking quite mild turns. But then once you get your bonus actions and your this and your that, then suddenly each move becomes sizable, um, yeah. and the game finishes very quickly. Suddenly, where it's like the board is sort of half done, and then suddenly, padak. Yeah, like so, it's sort of done, right? There's a power creep over there, a scaling that happens in the game. Yes, yes. Start, in starting of the game, every turn is only three resources. Ending yes. of the game, you have nine resources and other powers coming in. Correct, correct, correct. So, what the emotional journey of that for a lot of people is the fact that I feel that my actions have made me more powerful, and powerful in a different way from someone else. Right. Got it. You see that I answered six questions in a particular way, and now I can evict voters. Correct. Correct. It is something that you haven't done, so I have earned it. Correct. Um, and uh, and 
again those are those are, that's that's another trick that a game designers use uh, where you have character progression and you know, all rpgs use that god of war uses that pubg uses that very well right pubg you are given you open a door you have a rng element where you get a gun you maybe get a good gun a bad gun and you pick it up and then you make a choice do i do i want the do i want a machine gun or do i want uh, do I want, want a sniper rifle do Correct. i want to go for a loot box and at the end when the 10 of you left each one of you is uniquely equipped except the armor and the helmet everything else is uniquely equipped right correct um and and that allows you to uh, uh that allows you to feel that you have participated in this character's progression got it in god of war you can play in a as a character who is basically going melee heavy stuns or yeah. someone who just throwing the axe yeah and correct can, and that makes you that makes you feel that 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 gives you the effort, the effort reward is very very apparent correct. that works correct um the second element i want to talk about is is strategy and th- this is exactly what strategy is so first you, is luck luck second is dexterity St- dexterity and then st- now strategy mo- strategy strategy huh. is a uh, can manifest in multiple ways okay there is strategy with input randomness not okay. technically what that means is uh, you will be given a random card will be drawn a random event will happen you don't know what that event might be it, it will fall under an umbrella it will fall under a certain gap but uh, you don't necessarily know what's going to happen and now you have to adapt to it you have to build your tactics and your strategy to uh, to adapt to that Right. The second is all variables are known. You know everything that's going to happen in the game, like chess. Correct. Now, how do you build a long-term strategy that is going to pay off at the right moment? And that's a different kind of brain burn. Right. Now you can create a game where you are creating just one final payoff in the end. Hmm. Or uh, and that works, and that works even for that works a lot for purest gamers, but. if you want to keep people hooked if you want uh the movie or the cinematic experience to be great you have to create items you have to create those great moments uh throughout the film right right so correct similarly you have to create those micro rewards uh throughout the game so in a strategy game you will have a micro reward of age of empires finding the gold mine of capturing the town center right of being able to create the army and upgrade the army right okay um and from there you go on to uh to alter your strategy because your opponent has just done something else suddenly they are playing archers only or they playing something else and you are altering your strategy and you are basically creating small benchmarks that players can judge themselves against okay got it again okay shivam's just coming in with great recommendations yes. i haven't played diedo but brass is amazing there are two versions of brass okay both both fun uh anachrony i have a copy i haven't played it yet and great western train again these are these are games if you already ha- i would recommend if you already played games sure not gateway But, games these are not gateway not games not gateway games uh katan has been one of the best gateway games uh, for okay. most people even okay. for game designers i know so many game designers who come back and tell me that katan changed my life nice because it really tells you what a game can be that a game can be more than just uh just a dice roll it can be more than snakes and ladders how so uh okay how many of you okay in the chat how many of you have played katan because i'll give my example depending on how many people know the rules the show of hands let's assume that some people have and some people have okay great okay so katan let's start at the beginning the board is set up right the tiles are laid, laid randomly on and on top of those uh tiles you have tokens which are the numbers which are laid on top of it correct so there's in the beginning there is input randomness the board is new every time right so you have a modular board and and once you have a modular board that works so well and there's a video I would recommend for talking about Catan's board it's called uh, hexagons are the best hexagons okay check it out it talks about how hexagons uh, tessellate infinitely right and cre- and you can add a hexagon to a hexagon grid without it breaking right correct so hexagons are the best hexagons and uh, you have this random board that is made and that same random board stays for everyone else right so it's not like you have a you got shot another stick or i got a a better deal correct now what you have to do is is it's a game of taking bets okay every turn you're supposed to, from from the setup phase uh 
you start placing your houses on intersections of these hexes right and what are you basing that on you're basing on that on a punt a, a gamble that this number is going to show up not correct. only your turn but everyone's turn correct and it's a two dice setup so certain numbers have high probability certain exactly. numbers have low probability low right? probability so it's a so two like dice setup seven Normal eight and all will have like way more yeah seven will have have the highest and why is that uh, again 36 possibilities you have yeah. one plus six one plus uh, five one plus four yeah, Sim- yeah so seven is made by one and six two and five three and, three and four. four four and three and yeah. backwards you know yeah yeah so there's so many possible ways seven can show up so what they have done in katan is taken the seven out of the equation there is no seven number tile in katan right there's six and there's eight got it and now you're trying to look at katan and you're 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 trying to say okay i know eight i know four is not the best number but four has these three resources that i need to go for right that's the best intersection of resources correct and now i'm going to go for the, for the intersection but someone else is saying you know what i know four has a better intersection but i'm going to go for the uh, i'm going to go for uh, sorry i'm going to go for a sec- uh, eight because eight is safe eight is going to show up more often right and now to counter my eight i'm going to build a road to this part of the map where i can trade this extra wool i have right um so the game is allow is is constantly asking you to deal with the randomness it's okay. a very very random game but the game is not about uh, whose dice roll falls best it's about dealing with the uh, what do you call it about the random that randomness Got then it. comes the second layer of the game which is the social element of the game it's about trading if you are winning and you're being nice people might still trade with you if you're winning and you're rubbing in people's faces all no, trades will trade. stop correct Correct, There's correct. a very strong social element. How much can you convince someone? How much can you play the underdog while you're still winning? At the same time, you are building a road, but I am building a road, and that's a zero-sum thing. And we'll get to what a zero-sum uh, event is. Your long road is going to cut my long road, so I don't like you. Right. And now you have these layers of just a dice roll happening every turn, a social element, and on top of that, you add. one more random you add the the thief every time the most common number shows up 7 someone can attack someone else like just attack them basically the thief on the map you can move the thief across the road to any one tile that tile will stop producing oh wow that's freaking so crazy 7 is going to show up a lot and every time 7 shows up you will not earn money that round to spend uh, in your turn but you will get to you get to do something that in game design is called a take that okay what's a take that it's a trope it's a game design trope it's a, okay. it's a mechanic take okay. that like it's just aha take that ah okay so it's like the draw for draw for draw for is the classical take that draw right? for ultimate yeah, take and, that and i know the chat will hit me for this you cannot stack draw twos on draw twos look man <laughs> like the guy on twitter said to the uno account we'll take it from here <laughs> हां विल टेक इट तुम्हारा हो गया विल टेक इट हो गया बनाना मत मत बनाया ना कार्ड अच्छा मस्त मत पूछा किसी ने नहीं पूछा ना नहीं पूछा ना दिस दिस इज वन ऑफ दोस थिंग्स वेयर सोसाइटी हैज मेड अ डिसीजन या एंड देयर इज नथिंग द लॉ कैन डू अबाउट इट सो इट्स फाइन लाइक इवन इन शासन देयर इज अ मैकेनिक दैट वी हैड इन द अर्लियर वर्जन इन द प्री रिलीज वर्जन व्हिच वी रिमूव्ड हां ओके इट्स कॉल्ड इट्स अ कोएलिशन मैकेनिक वेयर यू कैन फॉर्म अ कोएलिशन विद समवन एल्स ऑफिशियली राइट एंड suddenly especially people from india have somehow found that rule and they are like can we find form a correlation still <laughs> and i'm like yeah fine so i made a forum and i've shared that forum to everyone who asked me saying these are the rules in case you want to form a correlation so people are playing with correlation this is not an official rule nice but people are playing with them homebrew homebrew but they are like this is how we want to play your game thank you for the cardboard see you exactly thank you for the cardboard and see you exactly that's correct yeah. and that's a very correct attitude to have um all right yeah. everybody smash the like button smash it smash it smash it smash it smash it so people know that this thing is happening tell me more about different uh, game mechanics and tropes that's okay. pretty cool i'm trying to understand what the building blocks of these games are so that's pretty cool okay so let's let's first let's uh, let's just do introduction what what a trope is a trope is a uh, a trope is a recurring pattern in a story right a, a pattern that might recur In multiple stories. So Morpheus and Gandalf are both the mentor figure. Right. Uh. Uh. Who's the? I'm sorry. I'm not a big Star Wars fan. No, no, that's fine. What's Mark Hamill's character's name? 
Luke Skywalker. So bad. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Luke, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. 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 Luke yeah. is the he's reluctant hero. hero. Yeah. He's the reluctant exactly. hero. Exactly. See, straight up. Yeah. Everyone knows the everyone knows tropes, and Correct. when people are, uh, uh, when people make films or make games, they try to codify these tropes. Sure. If you haven't haven't already been there, TVTropes.com. Please check it out. Uh, TVTropes.com has the most TV hilarious compilation, TV and it's it's. And it's a rabbit hole of you like. It is. It is a rabbit hole, guys. You will yeah. not leave. You will not leave. Yeah, check out TV tropes. Uh, just uh, uh, one of the players of Shasan made made a TV tropes page for Shasan, where all the tropes of Shasan are, bro- are broken down. <laughs> um, so what are tropes in game design? Uh, one trope in game uh, game design is let's say, a hexagon board. Okay. That's a standard, uh, tes- tessellating board. Uh, dice roll and RNG. Mhm. Mhm. Uh draw one discard one. Right. Uno tons of games. Uh, yeah. Exploding kittens, uno so many other games. Draw one discard one. Got it. Uh Ratan Deep saying make a game in a stream. We could do that. We could do that sometime. Yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe next week. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Let's make a fun game in a let's stream. Let's make a game. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Um uh you have tropes like Uh, leveling up a character. Okay, let's yeah. do video game tropes. So, yeah. Well, a lot of people have played video games over here. Uh, one trope is tech trees. Yeah. You develop a technology. The technology might be swinging your axe in a particular way. So you have a ability tree or tech tree. Yeah. And then you level that up. Yes. 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 Skill tree, basically. Yes. Uh, within the genre of battle royale, there are tro- there there's the trope of of or even in all FPS, there's the trope of uh, leveling up an item. Correct. You buy an item and you upgrade it. Correct. There is the trope of again these are mechanics by using the word tropes. Uh, there is the trope of uh, of cooldowns. You can only use a spell so many times. Yeah. There is a mana cost. Correct. Correct. Uh, and there are. Did <laughs> Siri for some reason just decided to yeah. have inputs? Yeah. Spiderman has the skill to think. Spiderman also has one more thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. It is the expanding map trope. In game de- in game design, you don't want the players to do a lot in the beginning because they will start feeling lost. Right? No, I think it's an open map though. I think Spider Man is an open I, map. GTA was a closed map. Then Spider Man, some some areas open up later, no? No, no. I think Spider Man, the whole thing is there, but there are a couple of games like that where GTA, like, for example. Yeah, yeah. You can only go later after you like get certain yeah. things to a place. GTA, some 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 motion yeah, yeah. of Far Cry. Yeah, even even Red Dead Redemption, like yeah. it opens and, up. And why later. is the game designer doing that? They have designed the whole game. It's already on your hard drive. Correct. Why is it that they are still they are just? I guess it's because they want you to learn in one exactly. place and then go out, right? Like even exactly. like Zelda, for example, right? Like yeah. uh, Breath of the Wild has that. Where first you just on that plateau. You learn everything, and then it's like, oh, now go out yes. into the yes. world and sort of do this. Yeah. Pokemon has that. God of War has that. Yeah. A uh, God of War, basically, what they do is they they'll give you a skill. The skill will be, let's say, the uh, the arrow from uh, Alpha Aim. Yeah. The light arrow. Once you do that, you can build a light bridge. Yeah. Now, they don't want you to work for the light bridge. They just want you. The, the designer says, or designer is thinking, if I give you too much in the beginning, you'll be lost. You'll yeah. spend four hours. Figuring out where to go, let me make this a struct. Let me handhold you. Sure. So, uh, so let's break down the tropes in a game like. Okay, let me see what games I already have broken down over here. Just selling stuff. Monopoly. Place. There we go. Okay, Monopoly. Monopoly. Everyone's played that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monopoly has the first thing on Monopoly. The board is static, but there's an RNG element. You roll the dice. Huh. The most common trope in most games. Correct. Uh, is RNG. The second trope is something called set collection. Okay. You're collecting so many types of a particular thing. Huh. Correct. Correct. Sushigo has that. Shasan has that. Monopoly has that. Correct. The more you collect of a particular type, the better it is. Zelda has that. Yeah. uh god of war has that a lot of games have that you're collecting three apples or uh four capitalist cards or five something else yeah got it uh then you have an rng card or you have two sets of rng cards in yeah. uh, chance and community chest chance and community chest right and yeah. then you have trading correct but monopoly has something that makes people hate it more than they hate ludo okay which is in ludo the game balances itself out you uh the stronger you get the weaker you get 
right the stronger you get the lesser points you have you're getting closer to the victory but you only have one thing and in the end you need that one particular number and then the number doesn't show up you're stuck right correct uh in in monopoly if you roll right and if you get the right numbers suddenly you are in a lead and no one can stop you correct this is true and then the become it literally becomes a monopoly though like yeah. that's yeah. the point like, and the game was built as a criticism of capitalism correct 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 <laughs> everybody <laughs> forgot that very nicely yeah and just went yeah. oh man yeah Power. the same shasan is shasan is built as a criticism of modern political system dude it's bullshit what um, shasan has taught me is that uh, no one has principles um, hmm. everyone abandons principles at first first chance of loss all principles are abandoned i thought i was most progressive person but when i need to be supremo i'm most supremo um, of all supremos uh, in the game and i have realized for me the great takeaway from shasan is that every time i walk away from the game i'm like if i sacrifice my principles so easily for just a board game like for winning just constituencies in a board game of course politicians do it for real seats politicians have been hated for as long as they have been politicians yes so is it that uh what what's happening over here do only the most corrupt people get into politics or is the system incentivized to allow those people to grow faster right and that's the question we need to be asking how how is it that every politician gets us down uh you, there might be aberrations for each one of us depending on how our political leanings fall but more often than not we are like yeah pol- you can't trust a politician right. which means that the system is designed in a way to make you not trust each other right um so the problem if you want to solve politics you don't solve the politician you don't jail a particular politician you don't do retributive systems you create a cleaner more transparent uh non zero sum system right uh dice toy labs has just uh, uh done super chat dice toy labs is a is an amazing uh a publishing house from okay. bangalore they okay. make games uh that uh, what's up dice toy labs thank you so much uh, for your super chat um they are thinking just they they did a kickstarter earlier this year one kickstarter for one of the games indus okay okay not indus sorry uh, wat wat wataj okay and this is on re- on amazon and they have a few other games coming out okay congratulations uh, all right is the kickstarter still on is, the, is no the that's done but i okay, think late pages are on falgun let me know if uh, yes, they are yes let us let us let us know yeah. uh, ankit thank you for your super ankit. chat as well yeah. is an element of luck randomness necessary for fun if a game is entirely logical it becomes about deep study and becomes mechanical And Chess Fabricas wants to know how do you go about balancing the immersion of a board game you're creating while staying wary of players who might try min-maxing your game. Uh, can answer these questions as and when. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So is there a element of the random mystery? No. There's a there fun. There's no one type of fun. Right. Uh, there's a lot of gatekeeping that happens in nerd communities, right? Ah, huh, correct. Hundred okay. percent. If you're not a purist, get out. Ah. Huh. Uh, no, there are different kinds of fun, and different people have fun in different ways. Some Correct. people like aggressive games as fun. Some people don't. Some people like strategic games. Some people don't. Got it. Uh, fun is what you make of it. Fun sure. is what you enjoy, and there's uh, there's a wide library out there. Like I know people whose personal libraries are eight thousand games, seven thousand games. That's crazy. Uh, I was feeling good I... about having like fifteen. <laughs> I was feeling good about, but it's yeah. okay. It's cool. It's fine. Yeah. Like I, I've, I've met people uh, when I go to conventions. Entire basements in the house are just uh-huh. games. They have. See, this is very good for people who have basements. Yeah. I live in Bombay. Sorry, there is no <laughs> basements. So yeah, I have. Just, the, I have what can fit on the shelf, and everything yeah. else can fuck off. They barely want rooms in Bombay. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, okay. So anyway, so those are how so you, those are the mechanics and tropes. Yeah, and how yeah. do you how to go about balancing the emotion of your board game? You're creating while staying wary of players who try to min max. There will also always be the alpha gamer. There will always be that person who will show up and saying, "I have solved this problem." Huh. Uh, and some games they have. Uh, Vishwanath Nandan and Gary Kasparov solved chess for a while. You know. Yeah. <laughs> they knew what they were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they... And. Uh, I'm sure as a beginner I wouldn't enjoy playing with them like I have no idea what he's doing. Mhm. Mm-hmm. There's some flourish to what uh, they are doing but I may not necessarily enjoy it. Correct. Uh and that happens in some games. Some games are also gamer because the game has such less uh, social elements to it and so you need two player there'll be one person who emerges as the god king of that game. Correct. Uh, correct. That also happens in dexterity games a lot. Correct. 
everyone see that photo of Usain Bolt just smiling at the opposition. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> correct, correct. But yeah. uh, if that's the kind of game you're making, that's great. There's nothing bad in it. But you, if you're trying to make a social exercise, you can create elements of RNG. You can create elements of social interaction. You can create what is called a catch-up mechanism. Underground right. too, If you were behind someone, you could slipstream. Correct. If you were very behind someone, catch-up would show up. 200 points of catch-up would show up, giving you more nos. Correct. It was literally called catch-up. Why? Correct. Because if someone has lapped you, both of you are not enjoying it anymore. Correct. That's true. And uh, contrary to what some people might believe, games are about having fun. Of course. Of course. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, so. And what are the different yeah. ways then of sort of deciding how a sort of game moves forward? Like, what are the different mechanics in a game in terms of what you can do in a turn? Mm-hmm. And how yeah. do you decide that, right? Like you were uh, talking earlier about things like the prisoner's dilemma, etc. All of that, okay. right? So yeah, so that's a great segue. Let's get into game theory. What is it? Huh. What is it that player? What is it that players are doing? Players are interacting with each other and trying to find the most optimal optimal move of of doing each other. Let Let's play a small game with everyone in the audience. Okay. Uh, you and your friend have been arrested for for allegedly committing a crime. The cops come to you. Uh, let's let's open up the uh, graphic right now. Yeah, sure. Uh, one second. second, yeah. I got it. Okay, there we go. Graphic should be on screen now. Uh, one second. Stream page on, yeah. Uh, I'm just opening it myself, yeah. Huh. Okay, so now both of you, uh, if you uh, if you confess to your crime, if you confess to your crime, and your friend confesses to your crime. Uh, both of you get eight years in prison. Okay, if both of you lie and say we didn't do anything, the cops have nothing to pin pin on you except maybe trespassing, and huh. they take one year. Huh. But here's the catch: if you confess uh, and your friend lies, your friend says I didn't do anything. Suddenly you have confessed. Your friend said I wasn't involved. You have gotten ten years in prison, or sorry, uh, uh, and they have gotten zero. Correct. And vice versa. In Correct. such a scenario, what would you do? Um. Yeah, Pinak, that's the business dilemma. Yeah, it's a it's a game theory exercise. Okay. Thief says thief will always lie. Huh. Hmm. Is there an always answer? There is an always. There used to be an always answer. There used to be an always. I thought the correct thing to do is basically. My understanding was that the correct thing to do is play trustworthily, right? Okay. Let's 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 look at the let's look at the chart. Okay. Uh, you have. If I confess, then I get eight years. Yeah. Which is bullshit, right? Yeah. I don't want to go And to jail for eight years, even if it so is with my friend. What is the worst case scenario if you confess? I go for eight years to jail. Yeah. And uh, best case scenario? I don't go to jail at all. No. Oh, if I can, if I confess. Yeah, you go for ten years. I go for ten years. How is that the best case scenario? The worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is ten years. Best case huh, scenario is eight, scenario years. eight years. Correct. Right. If you both lie, what's the worst case scenario? If we both lie, the worst case scenario is that we will get no one years. Year. One year. Why one, one year? year? If you if you both lie, you both huh. get one year. You're both off the hook. But correct. If you uh if uh. If you lie and your friend doesn't, uh-huh. you have nothing. You're out of jail. Right. So if you notice, in both cases, the best case is better while lying, and the worst case is better while lying. Okay, that's true. So what would you do now? I would lie as fuck. <laughs> exactly. Most now they did ex- now they did experiments. Um, roast what roast officer? I have no idea what you're talking <laughs> about. I no roast pe nahi tha. I bhai matlab. Matlab. मैं तो मतलब खाना पकाना भी लॉकडाउन में सीखा सर मतलब रोज पोस्ट आप बहुत आगे की बात कर रहे हो सर मैं तो किसी मतलब तन्मय नाम के आदमी को सर मैं आज तक जानता नहीं हूँ मैंने रणबीर सिंह की एक पिक्चर नहीं देखी है सर सर मैं मैं रणबीर कपूर फैन हूँ सर आप समझते नहीं हो सर देख And said, "What is the best way possible?" Huh, okay. Uh, 
what is the best strategy possible assuming you are playing business dilemma over multiple turns ha huh. you are playing 50 games 100 games with the same same opponent uh and a lot of intense strategies emerged okay now we can do we can do take half an hour on this later but basically this is what happened uh the first strategy that emerged in the first year and won the first year was always like just always fuck the other one over and move on okay then it emerged that uh, a reactive uh okay. worked a tit for tat forget like you always uh, uh confess until the other one lies right and then you start uh lying so whatever they do you react to that okay again we can do this over half an hour later right but the 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 if i'm not wrong in the chat can correct me if i'm wrong uh uh the leading strategy was a forgiving tit for tat a what a forgiving tit for tat okay uh you forgive the first uh the first uh, attack the first lie you. okay you forgive the first, the first lie and you say okay i let it pass maybe maybe you are trying something out huh. let's move okay on. okay and then you punish them for second abolition got it okay uh then there was a third strategy that you uh forgive me to it for that but once in a while you just take a odd gambit <laughs> and you say i'm going to fuck you off on turn because you know the opponent might also be doing a forgiving so huh. they're going to allow you to fuck them over once once got it got it uh so it, it's 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 very interesting how game theory pans out but what i want to get at is uh whether something is uh is zero sum or non zero sum right a lot of times uh because we come from environments and i don't mean we as personally i mean we as a species come from environments that are scarce in resources we assume that life is zero sum right that for me to gain food someone else has to lose food. correct for me to gain a mating partner someone else has to uh correct uh uh lose a mating partner but there are 7 billion people with more food than we have distribution channels for right in the modern world the world isn't as zero sum but okay what is zero sum that if i win something so if i get a plus one you lose something minus one correct that's a zero sum correct uh there is only so many resources in the world and me taking something takes something away from you non zero sum uh hypothesis is that there's possibility that there are there are two in the world not just one right you can win and i can win correct and that that's very interesting and that is uh and that is what i think we should start looking at things at that life that relationships uh with employees with 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 the government with everyone we deal with is not necessarily a zero sum game it's right. not a zero sum game there is a cooperative way out there like like it's widely said all war is a failure of diplomacy right uh similarly all altercation is a failure of finding the middle ground right uh just sorry giant games uh a message here what are your thoughts on board gaming as a welcoming hobby i've met so many cool people through this so giant games is correct me if i'm wrong wrong ronak giant games is a is a gaming cafe in parla yes it is last time i went there was in parla i haven't been to bombay in a while yes yes uh, it is and again great collection of games do check it out i don't know if they open right now giant games are you open right now tell us in the chat tell people in the chat whether you're open right now or not and if you are then people can come and play games at your cafe yes, yes. it's in parla it's, it's under prime mall i'm not wrong Ground, uh, i think somewhere there yes yes, yes. ha huh. um so shasan for example is a is a simulation of politics abhi politics is the end goal of politics is non zero sum it is more resources for all of us right it is us trying to find more rights more freedom more uh opportunities for all of us a bigger economy not a small economy never a small right. economy right right but the path to political decision making more often than not is zero sum okay and that is where we feel right and why how is it that we cannot find a middle ground how is it that after after 2000 years of democracy we are still seeing that it's my way or the highway if you don't vote for my political leader i will uh i will not talk to uh i will not talk to you anymore and that's in a good good case scenario yes that's in a good case scenario, case scenario that's the best don't vote for me i yeah. will kill you yeah exactly exactly yes exactly that. that rohan you hit 90k 
Yay! We had ninety thousand guys. We had ninety thousand subscribers. Thank you so much. Hundred thousand soon. The momentum is going. You should, many, you should stay as many, consistent many as you are. Yes, I, now that's it. I'm going to live at this computer now, basically, for the next three months. Yeah, pe na honga, naya pe so honga, yahan pe sab yeh pe hoga. Basically, for hundred thousand, ho jayega. But thank you, thank you to everybody in chat, and thank you to everybody who stuck around um, on this. Um, what one can only say has been spectacularly inconsistent internet journey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Okay, so that that's one thing. One aspect is the prisoner dilemma. So you'll in some games. you will be faced with the prisoner dilemma right which yes. is basically where should i lie or should i tell the truth um mm-hmm. this is a thing that happens okay yeah, what, what are the ha huh? basically uh game theory is a study of these interactions the study of interaction between multiple agents who are in in more of more often than not trying to optimize the outcome right you might find a irrational player who is just trying to fuck around right but more often than not you will find a a rational participant and the rational participant is going to uh, deal with things in a particular way and the math and the uh, and the logic of those optimizations is what game theory talks about right but uh, because game theory is mathematical uh, there is all it's also what understanding that human beings are not necessarily right human beings are not necessarily rational beings right so things will not necessarily pan out the way you expected to in a simulation right and that's where you get an evolutionary biology to the picture okay uh has anyone here read dan arielli no i haven't uh dan arielli talks about things uh he is a behavioral economist okay uh and dan arielli talks about all kinds of interesting irrational things that uh humans do there's a podcast by him called predictably irrational if i'm not wrong okay and if you really want to understand game theory or game design is the understanding of game theory is understanding of people and mixing right. the two it's equation and emotions uh interacting with each other right okay okay and a good game design is finding out when people behave like equations and when they behave like emotions okay and the optimization of that right so in chess and more often than not you'll be like okay uh i this makes logical sense that i help you out right now but you know what fuck you right i don't like you got it yep been there been there many times like we will both win if you do this but fuck you got it vrinda says game, that i feel like games with a defector are the ones that use game theory the most yes that is the most apparent version of using game theory right. uh, again avalon is that uh, two rooms and a boom is that it beowulf is the biggest two rooms and a boom wow also the name of my biopic <laughs> oh you never mind two rooms and a boom is a great game if you have 12 people playing Now where to find twelve people to play games? We play right? pandemic time. Pe... I bought the game. Ab fair, kya fair, fair. Ab kya yeah. matlab? It's true. It's true. It's true. It's a great game, and you have friends over, and you're like, let's let's play something. Yeah. Works right now. No one comes over. That makes sense. So okay. So now you've designed all of these things. All right. Yes. Now how do you make sure they work? Play test a lot. And, okay. And uh, one is okay. There's a term I'm going to use. It's called ludo narrative designs. Okay. Um. it is that the ludo the the game design uh, part of it the game of it uh and the narrative of it needs to match right okay um if you are if you are playing a game that is making you think like a like a like a war strategist but the mechanics of it are uh, exploding kittens right like hey these actions i'm doing the decisions i'm i'm making and not making me feel Like right. I'm, um, like an, uh, I'm an army general who is trying to, uh, uh, who is trying to lead an army by pure strategy. Right. So you have to make sure that your mechanics and your story go hand in hand. Got it. Okay. And Shasan, for example, again I'm giving example because a lot no, of you no. have played it, a lot of people have played it. Uh, is you start the question by answering a policy question. Then you move on to uh, influencing voters, placing them on a board, and then you move on to literally talking to each other, horse trading and politicking. Right. Now those feel emotionally like actions a politician would do. Right. Uh, chess, uh, like uh, chess is actually a great example, right? Because yeah. it asks you to think like a military general. Exactly. And then it asks you to make moves also like a military general, like literally, yes. 
like you would. So in fact, like that. So that's like a zero dissonance game, basically. Yes. Where it's like this is supposed to be a game of kings. A king sees the whole board. A king sees everything, and a king makes moves accordingly. Exactly. Right? Like basically, that's. And in some courts, uh, how good a chess player you were, how good you could see into the future of what your opponent might do, because it's not. It's a game of playing your opponent. It's a game right. of, of double think and triple think. You're trying right. to figure out what the other person is doing. Uh, you are basically. Uh, uh trying to work the same muscles so ludonarrative dissonance is is something that you need to take care of your game is to feel like what you are doing okay uh like i've been working on this game for puchar hingra mm-hmm. and i want to capture the mode of working at lay 15 right correct uh if it's if it's a game that is aggressive like shasan that not puchar so brand. overcooked basically overcooked yes overcooked. that again is not puchar's brand <laughs> yeah yeah true 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 <laughs> um so it's a very important time to capture the story by using mechanics the same way uh the same way house of cards for example felt felt like slimy dodgeball politicians right correct um newsroom felt like the moral questions that you asked on daily basis when you were reporting the news correct in better times newsrooms had moral questions right uh, correct <laughs> newsrooms had uh, questions period yes newsroom uh, had questions period that's it um <laughs> in better times yeah um but uh you need to create your mechanics you need to tell your story by using things that feel now they might not necessarily be things a journalist does in their day it doesn't have to be literal it has to feel like it right a general doesn't move uh, a horse to forward and one left you know? correct 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 yeah uh, but it feels <laughs> like you are commanding an army on a battlefield correct it is an abstraction of the layer it is a correct. map of a map of a map correct um uh did so, you get time to play the games that shreya recommended no because the second i ordered them and they arrived i got covid which games are these uh this is uh, reef azul and seven wonders they arrived and i got covid and i couldn't seven meet one, anybody seven wonders is fun i have not i played azul and seven wonders i haven't played reef yet uh seven wonders is so much fun okay Seven uh, Wonders. Yes, uh, I was I played the game wrong the first twenty times. Nice. And that happens in board games. Yeah, that happens. No... Of course. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we playing, but it was fun. We made the game more difficult. Okay, got yeah. it. <laughs> uh, hi, hey Rohan, this is a message for you. Sorry. Oh, nice. Uh, I mean, economics grad professors are making an econ-driven board game. Would be a game plus a tool for researchers to collect of all kind. Need a little support. Uh, what sort of support, Sora? Uh, put it in the chat and let me see if if, if chat and we can help you. Then all good. Yeah. Yes, and a lot of people of the game board gaming community from India, which is a very small but very very driven community. Yes. Uh, so there's there's Ronak here, there's Falgun here, there's Siddhant here. Yes, lots of people just here and chilling. Yes. Hello guys, what's going on? So everybody's here and everybody's chilling. And that's good to know. Yes. So okay, you've play tested your game, you've done yes. all of that. Okay, now, so now hmm. when you're play testing your game, hmm. my uh, my thing is just like I mentioned earlier, uh, design for the illogical player. Right. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? You are going to you. You are going to sit in your room with your with your friends and your code in your, your colleagues and just make a game and like yeah, this is the most optimal move. So players are going to do this wrong. Right. The players are going to do what some men do. just want to watch the world burn. Exactly. Players. Yeah. Players, players are going to throw their gun in Fortnite and and start doing the floss. Yes. And at that point, you do something called following the fun. Okay. uh without going off the the narrative you want to set and you start allowing people to do what they like fun so you have a Travis Scott concert inside Fortnite where people can just dance and not shoot each other correct time around correct um so you when you play the stand you watching players play as realize that they are your audience and uh whatever they are doing is the right thing right you can't march in there and be all like no 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 that's not Don't what the rules like say yeah, yeah got it got it got it uh and uh, or no 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 you're supposed to play this game aggressively people are going to play the game they want to play yeah like they're they going to play exactly like they're going to want to play correct so, so plan for that accommodate for that and this is something again when i do play testing or even when we when we make our films and we do screeners mm-hmm. uh for our films uh i watch the players as opposed to listen to the players right like everyone and rohan you must experience this after you've shown your work to someone and they're going to they will come give you gyan Correct. And it's not like they not they don't come 
they're not coming from a place of being disingenuous no not at all they're trying to help correct but correct perhaps don't have the tools to articulate it yeah yeah no that's true it's way is. better to watch and see what they're doing at the time so yes. even when we're joke testing for example right whenever we write mm-hmm. an on air with ai b script etc yeah. which we knew was going to be done in front of a live audience um we would go in and do a reading for our office and mm-hmm. what we do traditionally is that one or two people usually the people would be doing it on screen they would be reading it out but simultaneously the other three or four writers would be watching everybody in the room like hawks and they'd exactly. be grading the laughs they'd be grading the laughs as they happen because exactly. later on people might give you some feedback or whatever but all that matters is that laugh in that moment right exactly so we were grading literally for every sentence like is this a 3 on 10 4 on 10 to 10 on 10 literally and then going back and anything that was say below 7 or below 6 sort of got looked at again and then you worked on those parts yeah exactly and uh, and what we like we were also looking at things when did people pick up their phone Yeah, yeah, yeah. When were they talking the most? When when were they leaning in? When were their eyes glazing over? Correct. Uh, and I, by playtesting, I like watching. Okay. Uh, even when I, so sometimes in playtesting, I do something called a blind playtest. Playtest where okay. I go keep the game on the table and say, play it. Here's okay. the rule book. Figure it out. Right. You don't give because, any help. Because Shastan has like ten thousand boxes out there in the world. I'm not going to correct. Uh, uh, go to ten thousand tables teaching people how to. Correct. Play. Correct. Correct. So you give people the rule book or how to play video and say that's how you play it, and you watch what rules people understand, what they don't understand. Right. Go back and clean up rules that you don't understand. Got it. They don't understand or rules which you think are just fun rules. Maybe reword the rule. Maybe change the UI UX of the game. Sure. Sure. Uh, so play testing is or it's 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 like building an app. It's the UI UX part of building an app. You you're putting your baby out in the world and you're seeing how people react to it. Sure. Uh. At That's that an point, interesting way to think about it. You're basically putting a UI UX app out and seeing how people react to it. That's interesting. Yeah. If they're looking for the home button and they can't find the home button, it's not their fault. Sure. That's okay. Yeah, that's one good way of looking at it. Um and uh, over there you start seeing if your micro rewards are working. If people are if the if the structure of the game is working, every turn what are people doing? Right. If there's downtime. If there's something that is called AP. Right. Okay, what's AP? Paralysis. Okay. Um, it's like what move should I make? So many options, and there's four people talking into your head, and you're like, "What do I do?" And for five minutes, you have just frozen. Just completely paralyzed and frozen. Yeah. Oh man. That But that doesn't have just happen to that doesn't just happen in strategy games, right? Like yeah. it still have it happens. Like for example, beyond a point, like so I played Jenga over the weekend, right? And every huh. Jenga game also gets to that point, right? Mm-hmm. Where you essentially get into analysis paralysis because you're like. There are which block do I pull essentially, right? Like mm-hmm. without messing it up. And at the start of the game, everyone's pulling with confidence, mm-hmm. and then there's just like seven minutes of staring at the bricks. Um, so yeah, you're right. That's a very interesting. I never thought about it that way. So analysis paralysis is something that is good in certain amounts. You want people to to deliberate. Sure. Moves, sure. But, but you still want them to make a move. Yeah, you still want them to move on because. If you are in stuck in AP, everyone else is bored. And so that's exactly what I was going to say, right? Because that's when the friends are like, "Hey, play now," or when people start looking at their phones. Or I've noticed that's the point with most games fracture, especially at parties, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Where it gets to that stage, and then people start walking away, etc. All of that. Yeah. Uh, sort of responded. Sort of like uh, it will use auction theory. Uh, User will enjoy the game, but at the back end, data will be captured for development. That that happens in a lot of games. Uh, I'm going to talk about one game. It's called Fold It. Okay. University of uh, Washington, if I'm not wrong, made a game about protein folding. Okay. Now proteins fold in a particular way. Right. The researchers created those rule sets and made a great interface. And created a game for protein folding. Now different huh. proteins can solve different diseases, diseases or solve different bio- problems in chemistry and biology. Right. And what they did was in fold it is uh, they said, here's the problem, solve it. Gamers went out there and started uh, solving. Correct. Uh, Because that's what gamers do. And accelerated protein folding research like it hadn't been accelerated before. because people were basically just doing the computing for them exactly that's amazing like that's just amazing sorry just and, very quickly going to read and, out some super chats 
Daivik Purani says, Zen, start a channel ASAP. Loving your knowledge. <laughs> no, Zen, come on this channel more. Uh, that, that'll be better. Shh, shut up, Daivik. Uh, suggestion. Uh, Kelvin Arosa says, anyone who wants to attempt playing the campaign no. for the North Africa would love any analysis. It's inside. a 10,000 hour game. Hey, pagal hai kya? Pancho, matlab kya? 10,000 hours? Just, I'm, you, I'm not even exaggerating. You have, he has job. I do things also. I'm not, you know, it's, it's, you can't do that. Um, Dice Toy Labs, thank you so much for your super chat. Also, it's time for you to drink some chai or coffee order. I didn't know you saw it. But um, sorry, I support as in you just play it on your stream. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So oh, yeah, you were saying. In Big Bang Theory, yes, Big Bang Theory had an episode. I've not seen the episode, but I've heard of it. Huh. The episode with, uh, with basically you in in uh, in campaign for North Africa, you have to look, you have to account for evaporation of fuel in North Africa while you are run, while you are fueling your tanks. You have to also account for yeah. Fuck off. Yeah. Just look like at. At what point does it just become the game designer showing off about their detail, like with the greatest of respect to them? Like, at what point does it become the accounting? Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> like, at what point? Like, just join the army. If you're that concerned, just join the fucking army, okay? Just do it. But <laughs> I'm going to talk about the battles of North Africa, and I'm going to talk about games like that. Okay. Uh, the battles of North Africa is going to be a game. Is is a game about North Africa, but from the vantage point of the Allied powers. Correct. What about the North Africans? Well, here's here's my answer to that. Maybe the North Africans themselves didn't see it as a fucking game in the first place. No, what I'm Maybe that's is, why. Maybe that's why they didn't. Settlers of Katan is people going and settling Katan. Right. What about the inhabitants of Katan? Yeah, exactly, right? That's what, to them, it's not a game, is it? Right? That's a whole different game. Our games are imperial. Their game, our games are like... Of Bush course they are. Of course, even Monopoly is just like make a person there, driver khareed lo. It's basically that only, like and, and uh, charge every person who steps on it. Okay, most AAA games and controversial opinion, most AAA games are Republican. Okay, fair. I'd believe that. Uh, you're going around shooting people. Yes, true. Uh, I know it's fun, but let's. Yeah, right now we are on the tip of the iceberg of game design. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. No, no. Okay. It's very good, very unlikely. How many people who are not in the tabletop industry or in the video game industry? How many game designers can you name? Hideo Kojima. Yeah. Player mm-hmm. unknown or Brendan Green. Yeah. That's who pretty else? much. Wait, who else can I name? Game designers. Uh. Uh. Would Neil? Wait. Uh. Would Gabe Newell count? But he's just the head of Valve. He's the head of Valve. But is he game he, he designer? He did. He did Half Life. He yeah. did Half Life, right? So Gabe yeah. Newell counts. Um. Phil Fish. There we go. Indie game designer, Phil Fish. Yeah. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Um, hang on. Does Sid Meier? Sid, yes, Meyer. Sid Meyer. Okay, there we go. Sid Meier is good. Um, mm-hmm. Does like a Neil Druckmann count or are they directors? Like Neil Druckmann is like Naughty Dog, right? Like, Naughty Dog. Again, yeah, they count. Right. There we go. I think Neil Druckmann. I could be wrong. Hang on. Yeah, they. Uh, He's a writer. There games. we go. Yes. Yeah, co-president Naughty Dog. Okay, now how many filmmakers can you name? No, see that here's where it gets worse, right? Straight away. A few hundred, right? Yeah. Um, we are the tip of game designer of game design. Uh, what we are do- going through in game design right now is the the three uh, what's that? Uh, the three waves of any media. The first wave of filmmaking or anything or cave paint of painting for that matter is. Okay, here is reality. I am going to capture reality. Right. Or I am going to work with the tools. Correct. I'm just take a photo and I am going to see, okay, how do I take a high resolution photo? So the first era of filmmaking was taking about, about taking the best photos. Correct. Then the second era is, now that I have this tool, I can create worlds that, that didn't exist before. I can create fantastical imaginations. Right. So you had all the second wave of cinema. And then you have third wave cinema which says what about looking inwards correct what how do we look 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 at this art form again it's an art form and use it to to pontificate on our lives to comment on our lives correct games are still in the second wave very few games have broken into the third wave games are more interactive games are the only medium that makes sure that you are paying paying attention throughout right correct sleep in a movie you cannot sleep in a game this is true uh we are entering the third wave of gaming 
Okay. And that is going to be great for us because as audiences, okay. but also as a as a people, as Indians, we don't need uh, uh, we don't need Hollywood money to make a hit game. Correct. It's true. Dota was made by four people. Yeah. Uh, before Valve got involved. Wordle was made by one guy. Wordle was one person. Uh, uh, Counter Strike was two people again. Yeah. Uh, Player Unknown was one person uh, leading it, but other people involved. Mm-hmm. Before it became from the Arma mod, it became into the when uh, Crafton bought it. Uh, right. Before that was one person. Game innovation, especially in a in a post Minecraft, post uh, Roblox world. Mm-hmm. Anyone can make a game. Yeah. And that, the economic the economic opportunities that we have over there, the cultural opportunities we have over there to tell the Indian story, to tell the Indian version of the story is great. So what we really want is what I really want is more game design out of India. Right. Correct. I want to I want the Rohan uh, uh, whoever inherits your position or my position ten years from now. Uh, when the same question is asked, can you name game designers? They can. They'll have twenty names on top of the head. I hope so. That would be very, very cool. That would be very, very, that, very. That would cool. be amazing. I would like that very, very much. I'm going to very quickly just read some super chats. Yes. Um, what do you think about sandbox engineering based games like Kerbal Space Program and Satisfactory? They're completely different from typical games. And Ankit wants to know what role do you think AI can play in this industry? Does AI solving a game make it less interesting? Okay. So the first question, uh, Kerbal Space Program. Uh, a couple of space program, then there is uh, this besieged. Mm-hmm. There's games where you can just build engines. Correct. I spent nights not sleeping because of these. <laughs> uh, someone on on your Instagram post asked me why do you have dark circles that are so deep. I'm like these games. Fair. Been there. Been there. Been there. Once upon a time. Yeah. And uh, what role do you think AI can play in this industry? Does AI solving a game make it less interesting? Kasparov went on, went on a crusade against Deep Blue, saying Deep Blue cannot possibly have defeated him. Right. Did we stop playing chess? No. You're not necessarily again. You're not playing games to optimize. You're not playing games to necessarily be the best. Sure. You're playing games to problem solve, to interact in a new way. Got it. It's a social exercise, or it's a problem solving exercise. True. Or it's a narrative exercise. There's no best way of watching a film, right? Correct. You can't say I am the best film watcher. Correct. Yeah. Same, correct. Correct. You can't say that. <laughs> yeah, you can win a few games, and you can have a great blog about the best film reviews. Correct. And you can be a, the best film critic, but that doesn't necessarily mean that other people can't watch films. Correct. Uh, Jaxi is saying uh, most successful e-sport games have been mods or different games. Exactly. Yeah, that's all true. Them, except Overwatch, all of them. Yeah, that's true. That's very, very true. Uh, But so again, any questions from the chat? Any anything you want me to uh, respond to? One of you asked, uh, "Where can I get Shaz?" And it's on Amazon. It's on our website. Yes, yes, that's what I want. Just pimp your game, pimp your game. Then yes. we can end the stream and we can do this again next week. Yes. Um, where we can focus on more aspects of board game design. Yes. And this and, thing, but yes. And and game theory also. Let's and yeah, let's do game theory. theory. Yeah. Let's focus on game theory. Let's do it. Yes. Awesome. And yeah. yeah. So the, tell us about the game. Games. So, there was, so one misconception everybody has because of the original Kickstarter, this thing is that Shasan is very expensive. But my understanding is that there is now a cheaper edition available. Yes, there is yes. a two thousand rupee version of the game. Yes, uh, it's the same rules, it's the same gameplay. Correct. But the wooden pieces are now cardboard. Uh, the board was dual layered, it's not dual layered. The shiny black box you see behind me. Yes. <coughs> is now that green box you see correct. behind me. Correct. 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 And there we go. So you can buy it. You can buy it. On yeah. your website, you can buy it online, um, and that's sort of about it. And um, yeah, Zen, thank you. This has been an invigorating conversation. Um, I have learned a fuckload, and I'm sure so has Chat. I can't wait to have you back like next week or whenever yes. you're free, so we can continue this discussion. Because, like you said, I feel like we've just scratched the surface um, so far. And um, I think uh, Chat. I think I can. You guys will agree with me when I say we need more of this for sure. So amazing. Uh, so before next time, let's do something. All the games we play before we get on board, let's try and break down the mechanics that we've seen in the game. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's think about it. Let's think about yeah. games differently. Let's look under the hood. Let's do it. That sounds like a very good idea. <coughs> let's and do next that. Next time when you next come time. back, we'll say, "Hey, I noticed this." Yeah. The okay. Can do, we can sure. the chat. Let's do that. Let's do that. And before you go, let uh, because chat is asking your top three games, aside from Shasan. Let Let's consider Shasan 
I don't right. done have and picked. You don't have okay. a top I'm, three. Okay, fair. Okay. But I can I can give moods in different moods. There okay. So let's do fun job. social games. Like in the sense, what what are three great games for a party? Let's let's uh, start people off easy. So let's. I'm not going. To, I'm going to do something that's not necessarily a board game. Okay. It's called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's a game where one person looks at the screen and has a bomb in front of them. Right. Has to describe the bomb to other people. Right. And other people have to now defuse the bomb. I have to tell the person how to defuse the bomb. Right. Because Got they have it. a manual in their hand. It's on Got Steam. It. It's everywhere. It's it's a great game. Okay. If I mean, have I've, I've heard about this game. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. You know, you can also do a keep talking uh, stream with your with with friends. I should do that. I should do that. That'll be great fun. Or you can do a keep talking stream where the chat solves the problem. For yeah, you. that's a great idea. We should do that. Uh, so keep talking. Nobody explodes is a great game. Uh, I have been playing the Unlock series of game a lot. It's Escape Room in a Box. Okay, yeah, you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, the 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 great thing is it's a great puzzle to solve. It's one hour long only. Okay. Best in my experience, best play with three or four people depending on how used to your solve solving puzzles. Okay. But the bad thing is once you solve the puzzle, you solve the puzzle. The game is over. Game, game is over is for over. good. But it's not a legacy game. The game, the some games that destroy themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but. This is not that. Okay, got it. Uh, you can just give it to a friend. Sure. Okay. So that's a fun, uh, fun, fun game that I've been playing. There's also a game again, a good party game. Uh, it's a great uh, icebreaker game, especially when you're meeting new people. Okay. Uh, making different groups meet. It's called Wavelength. Okay. It's a board game, uh, but it's also there's also app and beta out right now. Ooh. Okay. Wavelength. So, okay. So Wavelength is uh, a game where you will get a card. And the card will be from uh, will have uh, a spectrum from cold to let's say from cold to hot. Got it. Okay. And only you know uh, where on the spectrum is you, are you going to score points. So let's say if this is the spectrum. Right. You're going to score points over here. Right. Okay. Now your friends don't know that. Right. They have a dial that they can move across this. Right. You have to give them a clue that you hope will make them land over here. Got it. Okay. So you say, uh, you would say, let's say it's thirty percent from cold towards hot. Right. Okay. Now, what could it be? What could be? What could make people think, or your friends think, that this thing is thirty percent cold and fifty percent and not hot? It could be. Uh, it could be a melted ice cube. Right. 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 And you only allowed three words, and now suddenly people are thinking, no, 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 Rohan doesn't like this. So Rohan would have said this. Ha. Okay. Got it. Got and it. And things change from controversial to least controversial. Uh, nice. Relevant to obsolete. Nice. Okay. Uh, keep talking. The uh, sorry, the Vivint app is free. It's like the it's like the what's the what's the Ellen game? The what game? Ellen. The the Ellen app game. What's it called? Just two cap games, Heads Up and I played so often I'm just blanking. Heads Up, I know. I don't know the other one. Uh, damn it. Psych. Yes, psych. 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 Yeah. Uh, it's like Psych. You can play with the first deck for free, and then you can buy more decks. Correct. So Wavelength is fun. They have a beat app and beta right now. Check it out. Again, amazing creators uh, making some really Wolfgang Warsh. I'm not wrong. Okay. Like, chat. If you correct me if I'm wrong. Wolfgang Warsh. Okay. Warsh. Yeah. Check. Maybe then. Writing this all down. Okay, got it. Noted. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, Wolf Bank and Alex Hague. Yeah. Amazing. Check it out. Uh, again, super fun game. Uh, uh, again, these now these are not the best strategy games, the best heaviest games. These are games that. Uh, no, no. This is right now. We this is gateway. Party. We are gateway drugging people right now. The gateway drugging people again. We are gateway drugging people drug right now. Is, is Splendor. Try yes. Splendor. Okay. Chalo. We will try Splendor also then. Splendor is app. Hai, official app. Not. Bootleg app. Hai, matlab, ha, ha. Someone has made a version of it. Ha 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 ha. Okay. For sure. That sounds and great. For those who haven't to understand what Shasan looks like. The other things that the team has made that you can check out. There is again, sorry, just pimping myself, pimping the company out. We did everything from Ship of Thieves, Tumbard, uh, OK Computer, and Insignificant Man. So there we out. go. That's a pretty solid resume. That's a pretty solid resume. So, so that should tell you, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, and uh, yeah, and 
we'll see you around let's let's discuss game let's make games yeah Somebody let's do it this is making game in the chat sounds like a great idea yes so thank you so much for that thank you chat zen memin op in the chat please because this has been very very good and very very enlightening and uh, thank you very much zen thank you very much chat uh, with that we will now end this game and we will i i don't know man i was just i was just looking for an ending statement <laughs> and that didn't work and it's fine because that happens but um you know what are you going to do ah oh, well on that note send memin thank you so much chat thank you so much uh, i will see you tomorrow for binge o'clock on sahil shah's channel and then hopefully some more fun streams this weekend fingers crossed on that note good night everybody shubh ratri love you hamesha dunno why na jane kyu tata